Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Would the ushers please come forward for our time of tithes and offerings? John Paul, one of the things that we want to say to you is we had onboarding this week and we had a representative of the um, bishop's office come. Today in the gospel lesson, we're going to hear a story about a young boy, we know the story, who gave what he had. And we put it in the hands of Jesus. So let's pray. Sometime, oh God, we feel like what we have is not so much. But what we have is gifts to place, tithes and offerings to place in your hands. You always find a way to take what we give and turn it into great work for the kingdom. We pray in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
children ages three through third grade are dismissed to children's church at this time with Miss Kathy. Or they're coming down front first for the children's moments. I'm getting ahead of myself. They're coming down first to be with Kathy. So at camp, this couple of weeks ago, this was one of the stories that we studied. And I started out the story with a big old burp. And it got everybody's attention, but I'm not going to burp in here. But God made burps. Did you know that? Yeah. He made our bodies so that we could eat our food, we could digest it, and if we have excess gases or whatever in there, we could get rid of them, right? So he made burping. God knows exactly what we need. So in our story today, I brought a few friends with me. All right, can y'all stretch it all the way apart? You see all these smiley faces? How many smiley faces do you think? Keep rolling, Kaylee. You might have to get up. How many smiley faces do you think are on here? A thousand million. Not a million, but a thousand. How many thousand do you think are on there? Do you think there's 4,000 or maybe 5,000? 5,000. That's exactly right. Each one of those 5,000s have a mouth, right? And these mouths need to eat, right? So Jesus was out telling stories, telling people about God's love, and it was getting late, and the people started getting hungry. Could they all run and go to Chick-fil-A? Nope, they couldn't. So the disciples were like, well, send everybody home, and they can go eat. And Jesus said, no, no, don't send them away. They had five loaves of bread and two fish. Do you think that's going to feed all these people? No. But Jesus could make it feed that many people, couldn't he? Because he knew that God was going to provide, just like God provides for us. So Jesus gave thanks, and they served all these people. But you know what's really interesting? Is there was 5,000 men is what the Bible talks about. Do you think there were only men that day? No, I bet you they brought their wives or their children. So really there was more than 5,000. But Jesus gave thanks and God provided to fill all these hungry bellies and more. That was one of his miracles. And it proves to us over and over, each time we hear this story, that no matter what we need, he knows what it is and he's going to fill us, isn't he? Let's pray. God, we thank you for this day and we thank you that we know no matter where we need filling, whether it be our stomachs, our souls, whatever it may be, that you're going to fill us and you're going to provide for us. We thank you again for this day, and in your name, in your name we pray, amen. So I've heard some wonderful voices out there this morning, and we are looking for new members in the choir. So if you are interested, we meet on Wednesday nights from 6 to 7 in our choir room. We'd love for you to come out and check us out, see what it's all about, and sing for the glory of God with us. Let's stand together again this morning and sing to God Be the Glorious, number 98 in your hymnal. Text will also be printed on the screen. All three verses of To God Be the Glory. Of blood to every being. 
The gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ given to us from John's gospel. St. John's gospel, the sixth chapter, verses 1 through 21. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up to the mountain and sat down with his disciples now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said, This is to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But where are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated so also the fish as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. They filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. When Jesus realized they were about to come and take him by force and make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, the disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because of a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea, coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Let us pray.
And now, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Bishop James Swanson had this to say one time, and I want to quote him because when I saw it, I thought it was absolutely marvelous. I have this issue with Christians, just as Wesley had with many of us Christians. Before we move, pray, witness, or act in the name of Jesus, we want to know what the outcome is. We want to know what the outcome is. What's going to happen, or, or how is it going to work out, or what's going to take place? All of that before we want to know, or take a moment, a pause, to pray. Today's story is set in the Sea of Tiberias, in the farthest region on the side of the Sea of Galilee, about as far away as you can get, the most remote area. The sense is, in John's Gospel, that Jesus was so overwhelmed with crowds and with people that he just needed to get away and have a time to pray. Everybody needs that. Just a time to get away and a time to pray. And believe it or not, there are people who come to Fort Walton to the beach in the summer because they want to get away from folks. I want to come to an isolated place. And you know how that is. You put your seat out and somebody comes and sits close to you. I don't know why that happens. So here they were in this isolated place and Jesus climbed the hill to teach his disciples. We're in this period of time, which I kind of call the boot camp for the disciples. They're, they're having to learn what Jesus does and they're learning how to trust Jesus and they're learning what Jesus, how Jesus talks and thinks and acts and they didn't have onboarding like we had. You couldn't say and ask all those great questions that all those people did. And thank you, everybody, who was a part of making that such a great event. And so the crowds had just they came flooding out where they were. And Jesus remembered, if you read before in the fifth chapter, one of the things that's important that Jesus said was, they said, we have searched the Scripture looking for eternal life. And Jesus said in John's gospel a very clear point. Search the scripture all you want. But everything points to me. Everything points to Jesus. That's how you get eternal life. So these, the crowd coming, trying to understand, you know, they wanted to make him a king. They wanted to do all kinds of things. They heard all these things by reputation. So they gathered in great numbers. And when they came together on the hill in this isolated place, they had traveled out of all the villages. And they only ate one time, typically one time a day, which was in the middle of the day. They're great southerners. They ate dinner. And so it came dinner time in the middle of the day, and suddenly Jesus looked around and said, here's this great crowd. And he turned to Philip and said, uh, where are you going to go buy bread? And Philip was just overwhelmed by this. Philip's one of those logistical people that I got to know what to do, and I got to know how to do it, so how are we going to buy bread for all these people? And he gets all kind of nervous and antsy. We don't have enough. We wouldn't have enough money if we had years' worth of wages. So Philip says to Jesus what we say all the time when we pray. I just, Lord, I don't know how this is going to work out. I don't know what we're going to do, but you know what you are going to do. And so we're going to trust you. We're going to say that 1,174 times in this church and mean it, every single one. So then Andrew comes up. He says, oh, Lord, we, we've got something here. 
I got a boy, and he's got a basket, a lunch, he's got a basket, and in that little basket, he's got some, uh, some bread and some fish. And so we're all thinking, you know, if you go to Publix and you go to the bread aisle and you see all those loaves of bread, or maybe you go over to the bakery and they've got those long loaves of bread that you have over there, and, 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 and we've got fish. Let's go down to the fish market and get something big. No. Barley loaves. You notice they kind of said it, barley loaves. Well, we got something, but um, we just have some barley loaves. You really want to know what they had? Biscuits and sardines. I mean, get that in your mind. I mean, let's just make it, let's just up the bar and how difficult it is. And and so Andrew looks at what they've got in the basket and he says, uh, what is this in the midst of everything? What is this in the midst of everything? In other words, what Andrew was saying, we don't have anything at all. You know, sometimes people communicate and sometimes we talk amongst ourselves and we've all been in that moment where we said, you know, we just don't have anything. We think in terms of scarcity. Oh my goodness, the mission is here and the resources are small and, and we don't have anything. So what would we do if we were the boy? If I don't eat, you know, I haven't had anything to eat all day. And if I don't eat, maybe, you know, then, then uh, I don't know what's going to happen. If I give it all away, I may not have anything left to take care of me. And we suppose in that day, the mother, his mother made this lunch for him and said, be sure and eat it. But he came to listen to Jesus and when he saw what was there he couldn't help himself and he gave what he had he didn't worry about what the results were and so the disciples probably talking amongst themselves you know they would make a great finance committee of trustees in the church and I'm not picking on any group here or any place else. I've been there. What are we going to do? We don't have enough. We never have enough. Jesus, bring what you have. Bring what you have. And so... Jesus said, take the people and organize them. I love this moment, you know, because it could get get really hairy if people haven't had anything. Organize them, and I like what it says in the the series of Chosen, organize them in groups of 50 and 100. And so they go out, and because the disciples have to do something, they go out and they organize this crew sitting down on the grass in 50 and 100. And so they're all sitting out, and and while they're working, doing all of this, Jesus takes the basket, and and Andrew and Philip think there's nothing there. And Jesus goes, I can use this. He takes the loaves, and he breaks it. But before then, there is a moment of faith, and I forgot this in John's Gospel, and every time I read it, it kind of causes me to stop breathing for a moment. Go find 12 baskets. And they go find baskets. People are bringing in empty baskets. And so they came with their 12, they got the 12 baskets. And so he broke it, he blessed it, he broke it, he prayed for it. He handed it out to all of the people who started distributing it. The more they distributed it, the more people ate. And the more they distributed all the way back to the last group of 100, they, everybody ate. And John says they were empty and now they're full. The baskets were empty, and now they're full. All of this at the hands of Jesus. Jesus. 
They ate until they were full, and they filled 12 baskets full with what was left over. And they gather them all up. Now, the crowd wanted to make him a king, and we're going to talk a lot about bread and all that, so I'm not going to get lost in those details of bread because I've got a few weeks of talking about it. But immediately, John switches it over to them getting in the boat to get to the other side to go back toward home, and suddenly there's a storm, and they don't know what to do in the middle of the storm, what's going to happen. We don't have all the other drama except Jesus walks to them. He's in the midst of them with the bread. He's in the midst of them with the storm. He's in the midst of us as we come to worship. A few years ago, a group of us went to Denver, Colorado, and spent some time with Tommy Trojer. And Tommy took this story and kind of worked with us, and I liked what he had to say. He imagined what happened when the boy went home. So this is a dialogue between the boy and his mother and the mother he comes in he's got his hands full and the mother looks at him with that kind of sheepish eye like what happened did anything happen today he said yes mother there was a lot of there were people there were your friends there yes were there a lot of other people there yes we were on this hillside and nobody had anything to eat and the mother goes thank the good lord you had food but mother i just had to put it in the hands of the master what do you mean I fixed that for you to eat. The mother, they had nothing. And so I put it in the hands of the master. And she goes, what was he going to do with it? Let them all eat? Let, let all the disciples and Jesus eat? And then they go off and leave everybody hungry? No, mother. He broke it. And they began distributing it. She said, in our imagination. Well, I bet the first few got a snack, but that's about all there was. Mother, they were full. The mother said, everybody's polite. No mother. No mother. When I put what I had in the hands of the master, he fed everybody until they were full. And mother, they had 12 baskets. And mother, I brought some home. That's more than you took to the hillside. The son looks at his mother and says, that's the way it is. with Jesus Christ. Come and eat, Mother. And you can be full also. That's what it means to be in the presence and give ourselves fully to Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Maybe five loaves of five biscuits and two sardines and think like doesn't, doesn't seem like much. But like our voices and our talent and our music and our praying and our greeting on this day in this place when we give it to the master of the universe the king of the ages we come back full if there's anybody who has not received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior we'd love to pray with them anybody carrying a heavy burden and Lord we pray this morning from the family for us family of Judy Klug who died over the weekend already a burden they were carrying 
but we're going to put that family in the presence of Jesus Christ. And we're going to love them. All of this we pray in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Closing hymn 529, How Firm a Foundation, verses 1, 2, and 5. Will you stand as we sing together? word of benediction depart now in the fellowship of God the Father and as you go remember in the goodness of God you were born into this world by the grace of God you've been kept all the day long even until this hour by the love of God fully revealed in the face of Jesus you are being redeemed Amen.